Hi, everyone. I'm Frank Malakota. I work for KTVU Fox 2 here in the San Francisco Bay Area. My guest is the founder of San Francisco's Pacific Vision Center. She's a world-renowned ophthalmologist here to talk about your children and eye fatigue because all the kids are looking at screens and with school coming up, it could be a big problem down the road. Let's say hi to uh, Dr. Ella Faktorovich. How are you, doctor? Hi, great. Thank you. Good to have you with us. I know a recent study found that uh, children are spending on average about six hours doing this, looking at their screens, and ultimately down the road, that's going to cause some issues, right? Yeah, yeah. Especially now, as a lot of learning moved to online learning, there's been an increase in the number of hours that the kids spend on the computers, looking at their screens, on different devices and tablets, and that has some possible effects on their short-term ability to comfortably look at screens and study and learn, but also, and very importantly, it can have some long-term consequences to their vision. Um, is uh, a younger, say a first, second grader more susceptible than say a, a kid in high school, or is it kind of all across the board? Yeah, so uh, the age range where the myopia can progress because of uh, increased near work is between six and 12 years old. So it's younger kids and preteens, but it can definitely worsen in teenage years as well. So that is something that can, should be looked at as well in teens. Well, it's a good wake up call for parents who uh, are probably glued to their computers as well with work. Here we are going at it. Um, how about some, uh, some symptoms? What should parents look out for if maybe their kids are having some issues? So some of the common symptoms that the kids may complain about is blurry vision or the eyes feeling tired, maybe some tearing, but they may not complain about anything at all related to their eyes directly, but it could be that they may be having headaches more frequently or they can't focus or concentrate. <laughs> Parents should definitely look at the posture of the kids when they're looking at the screens and uh, the kids may also experience some neck or back pain, things like that. So not necessarily eye symptoms per se, but there could be a lot of others kind of vague, nonspecific symptoms and all of them I think should be taken seriously. What, uh, what are the long-term consequences if you, if you don't stop or at least limit your screen time? Yeah, so this is a very critical age that the kids are in where the eyes are developing. And so the studies have shown that increased time spent looking at near objects, so looking at screens, uh, looking at things up close, and that combined with decreased time spent outdoor playing can result in development and progression of nearsightedness or myopia, especially if the parents are nearsighted as well. So if the parents are nearsighted, then the kids are spending a lot of time at home looking at the screens, not playing outside. That's basically the perfect storm for developing progressive myopia, progressive nearsightedness that can potentially lead to damaging effects later on in life. And the study also found that uh, unless we start to do something about this with the popularity of Zoom and at-home learning and everyone loves their phones, that uh, our entire country could be 50% myopic uh, by the year 2050. That's kind of astounding. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, well, it'll keep you busy, that's for sure, right? <laughs> um, how about some tips? Um, some tips to keep your children uh, uh, safe and, uh, and away from such a, a disease? Yeah, so there are some things that we can do uh, definitely uh, to help children and help their vision develop properly. The studies have shown that outdoor activity, playing outside between 8 to 15 hours a week, has been associated with reduction in the risk of developing nearsightedness. So when I'm playing outdoors, that's not sitting on the bench looking at their phone, but actually playing and- Being a kid, yeah. Amazing, you know, doing the things that kids should be doing outside. So that's eight to 15 hours a week. That has been helpful. Now, as the kids are learning at home, a couple of things that the parents can do 
to help their kids uh, and reduce some of the symptoms of eye strain and reduce the progression of nearsightedness. One is the screens should be positioned at least uh, the distance should be from an elbow to the tip of the fingerprints, uh, to the tip of the fingers. So the screen should be positioned further out, okay? So from the elbow to the tip of the fingers, that's where the screens should be, or if the kids are still reading books, you know, that's where the book should be. Then additionally, the desk uh, where the child is learning, the best position for that desk is near the window so that there is direct daylight, sunlight, coming into the room and then there should be breaks periodically in the reading time so every hour or so the kids should look up away from their screen and look far into a distance looking outside the window so a couple of things like that reading while laying down or looking at the screens while laying down should be discouraged because inadvertently the objects are brought closer to the eyes so sitting up at a desk desk near the window, window open, every hour or so, kids instructed to look further away. How about if your son or daughter wears glasses already? They should have them on, right? Mm -hmm, absolutely, so it's very important for the child to be checked by an eye doctor so that the correct prescription can be determined. And then if there is, if the child's already nearsighted, needs to wear glasses, they need to wear those glasses. There is some misconception that wearing glasses less may help delay progression of the nearsightedness and sort of train the eyes. That is not the case. So if the child needs to wear glasses, then they should be wearing those glasses. Are you worried that schools are, uh, you know, we're kind of in a brave new world are not quite taking note of this just yet, uh, especially the long-term effects, but uh, they should take this into account that we got to tell you, parents, uh, if your kids are doing this, that you need to uh, limit their screen time and whatnot. I think so. This is a huge problem, and uh, I feel it's uh, somewhat underreported. According to the World Health Organization, by the year 2050, we expect 50% of the world population to be nearsighted, and nearsightedness can have deleterious effects on vision. Later on, people can develop retinal detachment, glaucoma, retinal degeneration. It's a whole host of problems. And there are simple things that we can do to reduce the progression. There are interventions that doctors can do when the kids are younger to help them from developing the nearsightedness. And uh, I'm very happy to be speaking with you about that because the attention really needs to be brought to this problem. The vision is very important. Boy, don't I know that uh, for what I do. Um, have you noticed that you have seen maybe more younger people coming in because of this situation? Well, uh, my practice is mainly centered on laser vision correction. And uh, now I'm seeing the children of the parents who had laser vision correction. Right. Uh, plus, there is a risk of nearsightedness uh, for children if parents had uh, nearsightedness. So now their kids are coming in. So I'm seeing younger people as young as 18 years old coming in interested in uh, laser vision correction. Younger and younger patients are coming in. Some are even younger than that. We of course tell them to wait until their vision is stable, but uh, they're very interested. So if there is a way that we can intervene earlier perhaps when the kids are even younger, then uh, we can reduce the need for glasses and contact lenses that way and uh, help them see better. I have a friend that wears, uh, he calls them computer glasses. They filter out some of the blue light, which causes some of the strain. Have you, have you heard of those? And are those, what do you think of those? Should they be used? Yeah, so I work with many optometric colleagues uh, in the city and the Bay Area, and uh, they uh, do prescribe those routinely to patients who do a lot of computer work. And in fact, uh, since I'm doing a lot of Zoom work right now, I'm experiencing some eye strain. Uh, I don't have a prescription, but uh, they have recommended me the glasses and I'm uh, going to try. All right. Well, doctor, anything else you'd like to add? I think this is great. Thank you for having me. It's really a pleasure to speak about this. I think this is a kind of a health problem that needs to be heard and addressed. All right. Well, uh, she is the uh, founder of San Francisco's Pacific Vision Center, Dr. Ella 
Faktorovich, I want to thank you for taking the time. That's some great insight there, doctor. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. I'm Frank Malico. For more news or any more information on this, go to coronavirusnow.com. Have a great day, everybody.